because after all, Christmas is about children and heightened by the presence of children. It is one of the most exciting days of the year, and one of the ways that we describe what we're feeling today and the feeling that we're going to have tomorrow is this warm fuzzies. Is Christmas season not about warm fuzzies or what? <laughs> now, until this week, um, I did not know where that expression came from. That is a, a, a phrase I assume that you've heard. Have you heard of warm fuzzies before? Yeah? Okay. Well, that actually came from a children's story written in 1969 by a gentleman named Charles, I'm sorry, Claude Steiner. Claude Steiner. And uh, this story hit people's nerves in such a way that it has been retold in 50 different versions. But I'm going to read just a real quick snippet of the original version of where we get warm fuzzies from. Are you ready? Many years ago, on a small island in the South Pacific, who wouldn't want to go there, lived a bunch of happy people. They loved their friendly little island with its beautiful palm trees and water and white sand. The islands had a special tradition. They traded warm fuzzies with each other. Warm fuzzies were like these little balls of fluff that were pure love that everyone carried in their pocket and made everybody feel good all over. People would offer warm fuzzies freely to everyone that they met. And if you happened to be down on a particular day and you needed a warm fuzzy, all you needed to do was ask. Even people you didn't know would reach into their pockets without hesitation and pull out a warm fuzzy to give to you. Every warm fuzzy was like a big hug from a close friend always plenty of warm fuzzies to go around. Huh? Good story? It goes on and on. But that's the setup for what, where we get this expression, warm fuzzies. Right? Now, when you gather around the Christmas dinner table tomorrow, or later tonight, or Tuesday, now you can impress everybody gathered around, because you can explain where warm fuzzies came from, right? Today was not wasted. You learned something. <laughs> well, Today is a day when I could easily have preached on peace because we lit the candle of peace. Today is a day I could have easily preached on Jesus because we lit the candle of Jesus. And I could have written or, or spoken directly on the Christmas story. But what came into my heart with a force that leaves me speechless is a story about warm fuzzies. And you'll get where I'm going as we get there. The title of the sermon is are we chasing warm fuzzies or miracles? And the specific definition for warm fuzzies is this. Something that makes us feel comforted and reassured. Something that causes us to feel good about ourselves for a little while. Something that makes me feel good, comfortable, or reassured for a little while. That is a warm fuzzies. Now, in reality, our culture has developed to the point where warm fuzzies are not just an abstract concept, but they're an object. If you look on the front cover of your bulletin, that is a picture of a pile of warm fuzzies. If you stay for the journey, or for those who come to the journey, you are going to get an opportunity today to make your own warm fuzzies. <laughs> And trust me, nothing will make you feel comforted and reassured like successfully making a warm fuzzy. Something that makes us feel comforted and reassured and feel good for a little while. We're going to try to ask and answer three questions today. And here are the three questions. How much of Christmas is about you and me chasing warm fuzzies? Second question, how much of coming to church is about you and me chasing warm fuzzies? And third, and most profound, is chasing warm fuzzies the best we can hope for as a follower of Jesus Christ? Is that the best? Or is there something more? 
but try to answer those three questions as the message unfolds this morning. And we have to start by giving you the most pleasant, warm, fuzzy there is on Christmas Sunday. We've got to read the Christmas story. So we're going to read Luke chapter 2. This ought to bring back good memories and comfort to your soul. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now in those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everybody was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went out from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. In order to register along with Mary, who was also engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in clothes, cloths, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who has crossed the Lord. And this will be a sign for you you will find the babe wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angel had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they came in a hurry, and they found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds went back glorifying, praising God for all that they had seen and heard, just as they had been told to them. How much of Christmas is about you and me chasing warm fuzzles? Have you read about, have you read any of the stories or have you heard anything on the news about people being called the layaway angels? Has anybody ever heard the expression layaway angel before? Yes, thank you. Fifteen years ago, one man, I don't remember what state, walked into a Walmart on a couple of days before Christmas, and he had a whole bunch of cash with him, and he paid off every layaway account in that Walmart, anonymously. And so when all these people came to pick up their things before Christmas, it had all been paid for. That story got played in the national news, got on television and, and newspapers, and as the years have unfolded, more layaway angels have shown up in all kinds of cities all across America. I read this this week. A man walked into Hayward, California's Walmart with $10,000 cash and paid off 63 accounts, dropped the remaining $200 in the Salvation Army kettle as he left the store. Another layaway angel paid off 35 different accounts in Omaha, Nebraska, and when a lady in Omaha came in to get her things, she thought it was a cruel joke and someone was making fun of her. When she found out the truth, she said, quote, it makes one feel all warm and fuzzy. I don't know what these gentlemen's motivation or these ladies' motivation is. I have no way of saying I'm not trying in any way to criticize what they're doing. But I wonder how much of that is about feeling good about themselves, about feeling all warm and fuzzy. One of the four families was coming today, this morning, and their truck broke down, and they chose, they said they could not come, so Ben and I packed up their gifts last night, and we went to their house, you know, and they had three little ones, and they came running out, and they were so excited, and they were so thrilled out of their minds. 
And all the way home, Pam and I were, what do you think we felt? We felt all the way up Because these little kids who didn't have two nickels to rub together had Christmas to look forward to. And they were so excited. How much about all of what we do at Christmas is about chasing warm fuzzies, about feeling good, about feeling comfortable for a little while. One of the things that I learned while studying to be a family counselor is that when we get married, we make all kinds of compromises. And one of the compromises that causes the greatest difficulties is we have warm fuzzies tied to family traditions. And traditions of families are at their greatest peak during holidays. And so when the holidays come around, Warm fuzzies come away to me one way, and they come to Pam a different way. One of the first things that we had to deal with is I grew up in a house, and I'm not joking, I'm not overstating the case. My mother said, if it tree is not live, it isn't Christmas. Now those of you who celebrate with an artificial tree, you're just pretending. <laughs> According to Virginia Richardson, you are not celebrating Christmas. And so it had to be live. Didn't matter how big it was, I mean, down to the last Christmas before they died, there was one about this big. But it was live. And so if you go over to the parsonage right now, you will find in the great room a live Christmas tree. Up there. In Pam's house, they, they had a mixed tradition. In the beginning, you think it was live, but towards the time when I showed up, it was artificial. So one of the first things we had to deal with when we started to celebrate Christmas is, well, will it be a live tree or an artificial? I guarantee you, every year around Thanksgiving, we have a conversation that starts something like this. Pam says, well, are we going to get a Christmas tree this year? Well, sure. Well, let's just do an artificial one this year. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, we just not bother then. Let's just not do it. If it's going to be artificial, let's not do it. Last year that we were in Kansas, there was like a four foot, five foot live tree in the living room. And I went out and got it and decorated it. I went off to church and did my thing. And a couple of days later, I come home and there's an artificial one in the kitchen. And it's decorated with Victorian ornaments <laughs> and cloths and dead, you know? And, and why is that? Because every time I walk by that live tree, I get all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> And every time Pam walked by her artificial tree with the Victorian ornaments, she get all warm and fuzzy. Because we come from different traditions. And those different traditions create warm fuzzies of a different nature. Another one was white lights or colored lights. After 47 years, I've got Pam Tom converted. Can you guess which one I am and which one she is? What would you guess? Is Dave a colored light guy or a white light guy? Color. Totally. <laughs> So, by the way, if anybody ever says something like that to you, the first thing they say is who they are. Remember that. <laughs> Honey, where would you like to go to dinner? Oh, we go to Pizza Hut or you go to, she wants to go to Pizza Hut. That's just a psychological thing. <laughs> so we have these different traditions that result in different warm fuzzies. But is that what Christmas is all about? then what do you put on the tree? Well, in the house I grew up, it was either hand-blown or blown glass ornaments or ones the kids made, period. My mom wouldn't allow plastic on the tree for years and years and years because that's artificial. And Christmas is about the real thing, about being alive, about the real deal. How much of what we do at Christmas is about chasing Warm fuzzies. The buying of presents and giving to each other. How they're wrapped. When you give them. When you exchange them. Where do you have dinner? I learned too late in life I should have had daughters, not sons. Do you know why? Because wherever the daughter is, that's where we celebrate the holidays. How much of what we do at Christmas is about chasing warm fuzzies. When we get down to the bedrock of all the things that we do to celebrate Christmas, isn't it really about 
Warm fuzzies? Really? <coughs> Two years ago, I was given a book entitled Christmas is Not Your Birthday, unless you happen to have been born on December 25th, which is very rare. The book is written by a guy named Mike Slaughter. The title of the book is a, is a true statement for almost everybody. And the premise of the book is this. We have sanitized the Christmas story, packaged it with the night before Christmas and the Santa Claus story, and we made all of these things into a wonderful package. At the end of it, it just makes us feel really good. But something miraculous happened. Not on this day. We made this day up as the day of Jesus' birthday. He really wasn't born on December 25th. But something miraculous happened. Shouldn't we be celebrating the miracle of Christmas instead of chasing warm fuzzies? And the author of this book says, we've traded miracles for warm fuzzies. Because we think that's all that's possible. Here's the second question. How much about what we do in church is about chasing warm fuzzies? I see I skipped something. I need to go back and touch base on it. We are so intent on chasing warm fuzzies. Warm fuzzies according to the American Research Group, shoppers will spend an average of $929 this year. Those who have uh, children will spend an average of $422 per child on Christmas. And 34% of parents will spend more than $500 per child this Christmas. It is an estimated that 25% of the people who are spending that kind of money will borrow it from their 401k. Or cash in a retirement vehicle or go to a payday lending service. All because we're chasing warm fuzzies. The average American household is $16,000 in credit card debt, up from $14,000 10 years ago. You know what it is? Here's the thing. Here's the thing that really gets me. Each of us have in our heads one Christmas back there that was perfect. Whether or not it was, you remember it that way, okay? And so what do we do? What do we do? We try to recreate the perfect Christmas from way back there. We, we try to make the perfect tree, and we try to get the right amount of gifts and the, and the right kind of the meal and decorate the house properly because we want that feeling that we had, that wonderful, warm, fuzzy feeling from the perfect Christmas. And, and try as hard as we can. We don't quite make it this year, but next year. Next year, we'll try a little harder, and we'll make a few more cookies, and we'll buy a few more presents, and we'll add a few more lights to the tree, and we'll do a few more things, and, and we'll have that perfect Christmas, and we'll feel all warm and fuzzy again, except next year, it doesn't quite get here, but next year, and we're like addicts chasing a high. And we chase, and we chase, and we chase, we have this fruitless chase looking for the ultimate warm, fuzzy Christmas experience. And Christmas is not about warm fuzzies. It is about the miracle of Jesus Christ coming to earth in human form. Haven't we turned Christmas into the ultimate chase for warm fuzzies? And a lot of you are unhappy with me right now because I'm not giving you a warm, fuzzy sermon for Christmas. Except this is what it's given to me. All right, let's deal with the second question. Have we brought this thing about warm fuzzies into our church experience? How much of coming to church on Sundays is about you and me chasing warm fuzzies? I had not been in Kansas very long when a family left. I don't know how many, I've been there maybe three or four months. And the reason this family went to the head deacon and they said, we're leaving. Because all he does is make us feel worse than when we came in. Well, that wasn't my intent. As it is not my intent today. But neither is it my purpose as the pastor of Jesus Christ to feed you warm fuzzies. 
You know what's actually what's going on in the American church scene? Those pastors who are really good at giving their church families warm fuzzies get warm fuzzies in return. And, and it becomes an addictive cycle. If I make you feel good, you'll feel good and give me and make me feel good. This is not just my concept. This was in this book that Christmas is not your birthday. The author says that's exactly what most modern Christian worlds look like on Sunday. We spend Sundays chasing warm fuzzies, quote unquote. We're unhappy when the pastor doesn't give us the warm fuzzy that we desire. We want him to dress a certain way, speak a certain way. We want the atmosphere a certain way. We want the music a certain way because that's what gives us our warm fuzzies. Is that really what church is? Is it really about chasing warm fuzzies? And I want to tell you something. It is extremely hard not to be an enabling pastor who gives his congregation warm fuzzies. Because when you're happy, you'll tell the deacons and the church leaders they'll be happy. And when they're happy, I'm happy. And when I'm happy, you're happy. And they're happy. And we're all happy. And isn't that what it's about? All making everybody feel happy. Amen? Except that robs the whole Christian experience of the miracle and the power and the glory and the reason that we're here. A savvy pastor has come to realize that the majority of people come to church for only to get their addictions fed. This warm, fuzzy feeling. Why is Joe Olstein so successful? I'm not criticizing the man, but he is wildly successful. And why is that? Because if you hear Joe Wolstein preach, you will never hear him say, you're a sinner. You will never hear him say, you need Jesus Christ. All you're going to hear is God loves you, and he wants to bless you, and he wants to give you all these great things, and to quote all these scriptures about all the things God wants to give you. Man, that feels so good, because I don't have to do anything. Except that that's not really what scripture says. All right, moving along, before I get chased out of here. Is church all about chasing warm fuzzies? Question number three, is that the best we can hope for? Is the best that we can look forward to Sunday after Sunday is walking away just feeling all warm and good inside and comforted for a little while? Is that the best? It's no wonder people are leaving the church in droves. If that's all of us, I can get warm fuzzies anywhere I want them. I don't have to spend time in here. Is feeling all warm and fuzzy for a little while the best that we can hope from following Jesus Christ? And I stand before you today and I say, no, no, there is so much more to this. There is the miracle of Christmas. There is the miracle of God come to earth. There is the miracle of God entering your soul. to be miracle workers. If you've given your heart and life to Jesus Christ, He has given you the power of eternity. You can be a miracle worker. Do you want to know what a high is? A high is changing somebody's life as the power of God passes through you and changes them. There is no greater warm fuzzy on the planet than watching the Holy God work through your life. And it's possible. The miracle of Christmas is we are called to be miracle workers, but we will not be miracle workers if we do not believe that we are miracle workers. Or if we do not want to be miracle workers. If we want to be satisfied with chasing warm fuzzies, that's all this will ever be about. But there's so much more. Honestly. You can lay your hands on a human being and take their pain away. You can lay hands on and ask God's power to heal a person. It's not going to happen every time. 
But it is it's possible. <coughs> this is the average American church family that 62% of you think I'm an idiot at this moment. That it is totally illogical to claim that we can be miracle workers and heal people. But the promise of scripture is, it says we can. I just want us to think beyond the chase for warm fuzzies. The wonder of Christmas is that God entered human history and created a miracle. A man was born of a virgin in a stall in Bethlehem for the sole purpose of becoming the redemptive Savior for you and I. We were created to find and accept Jesus Christ. It either takes an idiot as a pastor or a courageous man as a pastor to stand up and say, we're done chasing warm fuzzies. But I'm standing here today, and I'm telling you, we're done chasing warm fuzzies. We're going to be authentic about Jesus Christ. We're going to change Rush County for Jesus Christ because we're going to demonstrate what it means to know Jesus Christ. We're going to be miracle workers through love and through unconditional forgiveness and generosity and kindness to one another. We're going to show this world what it means to love Jesus. I want to be a miracle worker for Jesus Christ. I want to be the leader of a family of miracle workers for Jesus Christ. I want us to stand up and stand out and be different. I do not want us to be another church that chases warm fuzzies. Anybody with me? Amen. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Holy Father, you did not send your son to die on the cross so that we can sit here Sunday after Sunday trying to feel good about ourselves. We have made this season of Christmas all about us and we've forgotten it's all about you. All the presents and all the trees and all the lights and all the cookies and all the decorations are all about us. It's supposed to be all about you. Just you. What you did for us, the gift that you gave us, the gift of salvation, the miracle of Christmas, is that you cared enough about your creation to enter it, to change our destiny, to give us a way to put our free will back on the table and give it back to you. Holy Father, I ask, I know that you're already speaking, but I ask and pray that the hearts in this room who have yet to understand who you are, will open their hearts and minds to the possibility that there is more to life than chasing warm fuzzies. That there is, in fact, a miracle. And the miracle is that you loved us enough to send your son Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins and in turn call us into a miraculous life where we use your power for you. Help us to be that church family and to be those individuals from this day forward. We ask these things in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. I think